Welcome back to this series on the ICF core competencies. We are up to number five and I'm excited. I've got Angelos Derlopas with me today and he's going to be explaining to you all uh, really what active listening is. So without further ado, Angelos, uh, thank you for being here with us. And if you could jump right in and uh, let us know kind of your definition of active listening. Well, my definition, and of course, ICF's definition, is uh, the active listening is what is this a skill? Of course, it's the skill uh, that the coach has to focus completely on what the client is saying and also on what the client is not saying and uh, understanding the meaning of all the words of uh, what is said in the context of the client's desires. And in that way, he can or she can support the client self-expression. You know, one question I have here is um, you are, um, you're, you're from somewhere other than, than the States. So um, where are you from? I'm from uh, Greece, Athens. So in terms of active listening, I mean, your, your command of the English language is great. We had a little conversation earlier. Um, and, but, you know, is there anything in terms of active listening, are there any um, kind of um, barriers to people who are going across different languages. I should say that active listening is not language specific, but perhaps sometimes, uh, depending on you know, the mentality and uh, how people um, are presenting themselves, how energetic they are, perhaps is sometimes when they're very, when they're uh, um, a basic coach, a starter coach that doesn't really get to focus on the client and has. Uh, the energy and wants to uh, cut some kind of participate or uh, get there for the client or prove something uh, because we're not in the coaching session to prove something we're there to you know be there for the client and serve the client when when and how the client wants it I like that because definitely um, it, this seems to be a, um, a recurring theme here as, as you get more experienced coaching you spend uh, less time talking um, and and less time probably in your own head and more just creating that space. So so that was a, a bonus question I just wanted to throw out there as you were you were saying that. But I want to uh, ask you now when your uh, your mentor coach so when you're watching someone coach and they're really really good at this, um, what does that look like? What do you see? Well, it's like having a laser that you know, expands in all the fields and gets all the information and finds out and, and digs it, everything up and puts it in front of the client so the client can really understand or the clients feel that he's been respected a lot. And at the same time, the coach helps the client to understand better even the nuances or the, the client is invited to dig deeper and explain so the client can gain, can gain clarity on many things because we're usually working a busy life and we are influenced by everything that surrounds us and everything that's inside us as well. So usually we are in the process of endless processing things, ideas, emotions, and we don't even know uh, and what is influencing us? So, a coach that can really coach at the top level for on, or the, the, his active or his her is active listening is producing this value that we really need as you know as people as clients as you know whoever we really need someone that can make us discuss and understand better what is around us and what is inside us. I like that because, um, you know, it is, it is actually something that I've, I've thought of as an, an interviewing skill too, uh, is to be thinking about really listening to what someone's saying versus trying to formulate the next question or, or whatnot. So, um, great. So now if you could flip it to the other side and tell me what does this look like when a coach really hasn't mastered active listening and what, you know, what are they doing? What are you seeing? When you're mentor coaching, what are you seeing them do? Well, the coach who hasn't mastered this well, usually, usually, and I will say that in a sympathetic way, usually this co this kind of coach is looking and you can see on his face all the problems that he's trying to decode what is happening and he might be expressing, you know, 
different kind of feelings or disbelief. And but sometimes you cannot really understand, does he really hear me? Or is he judging me? Or is he has he really heard what I'm saying, what I said? Or is that what he understood from what I said? So, you know, you don't expect really big deal of listening on um, for when someone is, you know, just starting. So now let's go directly into um, really that that. Uh, that spectrum of ACC to PCC to MCC, you know, when someone is just starting, um, what's the expectation um, from from ICF standpoint or your standpoint as a mentor coach? Um, you know, they, they clearly have to be better at this at the MCC level, but can you tell us a little bit about like what, what you see as, I guess, kind of like acceptable at the ACC level where they couldn't get away with that at the MCC level? What, what does that look like, that spread? Hopefully, uh, uh, at the ACC level, you don't get that kind of coach that I described just just now. Okay, he has uh, uh, credibility. Um, he can uh, demonstrate an understanding of what the client is saying. Uh, it's just that it, he, he cannot really go in too much, you know, big depth like a PCC level coach could do. He, a PCC level coach could provide more clarity, more uh, understand better, you know, um, what the client is saying is not saying, what the client is feeling, how that would be linked to values, dreams, visions, what is holding him back, uh, what can bring him, her forward, and, uh, through that kind of listening, he can facilitate more understanding and more insights and can serve the client better. Yes. Now, at an MCC level? Yes. And, and I'm, I'm just kind of thinking through the how this all fits together at all. I mean, these core competencies really, really fit together well. Um, and if you miss out on one, um, the others aren't going to work. Like if you're not doing active listening, um, you're probably not going to get into powerful questioning. Um, because your questions are going to be, you know, off. They're going to be from your standpoint, not facilitating the client uh, understanding uh, or digging deeper into themselves. Um, so, so Angelos, thank you so much. Could you uh, let folks know you're a mentor coach? So if folks are interested uh, in contacting you, how should they get in touch with you? They can visit my site. Our site is positivityglobal.org. It's positivityglobal.org. And the email is ask at positivityglobal.org. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Angelos, for coming to us from all the way from Greece. Uh, and thank you for watching. And I, I mentioned uh, powerful questioning. That's going to be the next one up. If you just click up here, you're going to get right into powerful questioning. Or if you click down here, you can start over at the beginning of the 11 core competencies and watch them all. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.